Good morning. Please maintain silence until the meeting begins. Madam President, we are recording. Good morning. Welcome to the special meeting of the Board of Water and Power Commissioners. Today is Tuesday, November 29th, 2022. This proceeding is being broadcast on Channel 35. The exact broadcast times can be found by contacting Channel 35. Board of Water and Power Commissioners, please stay present for roll call. Commissioner Lair. Here. President McLean Hill. Uh, present. Commissioner Neiman Brady. Present. Vice President Ruiz. Present. Four board members, a quorum is present. Madam President. Uh, thank you. Um, I would like to open the meeting today by recognizing uh, November as Native, uh, National Native American Heritage Month. It has been a, a, uh, a terrific uh, and eventful month. Um, over 5 million people in the United States identify as Native American. Among this population are some of LADWP's very own employees, as well as a member of our Board of Commissioners. The culture and values that these individuals bring to the workplace are invaluable and help contribute to the diverse environment that we strive for and celebrate. The Native American community is closely tied to the work we do here at LADWP. As we perform duties that impact natural environments, we value the insight the Native American community offers and use it to inform our work, both in the basin and in Owens Valley. Over the last two decades, LADWP has funded the Owens Lake Dust Mitigation Program implementing EPA-approved dust control methods and dust-available control methods. Through the program, dust emissions from Owens Lake have been reduced by 99.4%. Despite the success of the program, another entity recently pushed for the use of non-EPA-approved dust control projects, which threatened an eligible cultural resource site. LADWP took action and stood in solidarity with local tribes in the Owens Valley to protect the site against these non-EPA approved methods. Through our ongoing collaborative efforts with the local tribes, we have been able to ensure that in cases like these, the natural lands and resources that we have access to are managed responsibly and with integrity. And for that contribution, we are truly thankful. Uh, I would uh, say more, however, it is uh, a real pleasure uh, for me this morning to yield to our board vice president for her continued remarks on this august um, celebration of Na National Native American Heritage Month. Thank you so much, Madam President. And let me just start off by saying, I wanna acknowledge that we are on the land of the first people, uh, the Tongva Gabrielinos that inhabited this land. You know, in the United States, there are seven, excuse me, 574 federally recognized tribes. But as we know, there's many, many more tribes. As a matter of fact, in the county of Los Angeles, there are no federally recognized tribes, even though we have many tribes around us, from the Chumash, uh, the uh, Tataviam, there's a, many tribes that were here. And I feel it's a big responsibility to be the first Native American to join the LADWP board. 
I sense that responsibility, and I get my commitment for public service from my mother, who actually was a city commissioner for many years. She served both on the El Pueblo Commission um, at Alvera Street, and for over 20 years, she served as a commissioner for the Native American Indian Commission, which is a joint commission between the County of Los Angeles, the City of Los Angeles, and the community. Uh, recently, I was up in Owens Valley meeting with some of the tribal leaders, and I realized that as a department, we have not always had the best relationship with the tribes in that area. However, I have committed to go up there on a quarterly basis and work with them. And so I just feel that as we come to the end of uh, Native American Heritage Month, and so I come from dual cultures, Latina and Native American. And so my tribe, the Cherokees are the largest tribe in the United States that our, um, we, our, our headquarters is in Tahlequah, Oklahoma. We have 430 citizens, and I'm happy to say that uh, in the state of California, there's about 26,000 Cherokee citizens. So thank you for acknowledging uh, Native American Heritage Month. I have committed to do my best in this role, and um, Madam President, I'll turn it back over to you, and thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. And in Cherokee, we say wado. Thank you. Uh, we will move on to opening, uh, to, I'm sorry, uh, general public comments. There are no public comments at this time. Public comment is closed. Then to report by our general manager. <laughs> Identify the mystery man sitting to his right. Thank you very much. And uh, I, I apologize for wearing masks, but for our COVID protocol, we all sat in the wrong room at the wrong time. So while we're not contagious, we are following city protocols for, for standing by, <laughs> I should say. So thank you, uh, President McLean Hill, for uh, uh, the uh, intro this morning. Um, so I, first, I would, before I give my report, I'd like to introduce the gentleman sitting to my right. Um, this is Aram Benjamin. Aram uh, is our new chief operating officer. We've not had a chief operating officer since um, I left that role um, prior to the, the role that I'm playing currently. Um, Aram is uh, the first ever department employee who retired from here after more than 30 years of service. Uh, he uh, became the general manager at Colorado Springs Utilities, which is a very well-known, well-regarded utility in the, in the industry. They ran four separate utilities there, uh, water, power, wastewater, and... Uh, Yes. And gas, that's right, correct. And so he had a, has a, a broad uh, a range of experience, and uh, but his home w was in L.A., his children were in L.A., and he thought that somewhere in his, end of his career he might be able to return to L.A., and uh, I was more than thrilled to be able to work with him to, and uh, to be able to bring him back um, as now a new employee at the Department of Water and Power in, his, in this key role. And so, um, so he's both a, a familiar face, but a, but a much more seasoned face than when he left us seven years ago and brings back a wealth of experience and knowledge and credibility in the utility industry. Um, Aaron's role is going to be to, uh, to really uh, oversee our, our operating groups that, that are key to providing water and power in the city. He'll oversee water and power, corporate services, which involves um, our facilities. And, and our facility maintenance, uh, corporate safety, which of course is closely tied to our workforce, and IT, which also is critical to support our workforce and our endeavors in the future. Um, I feel very fortunate to have him here. This will allow me to free up a lot of my time and energy to uh, spin on uh, customer facing issues, external uh, facing issues, and our strategies and goals as a department overall, as well as continue to work on culture, uh, DEI initiatives, and, and try to uh, resolve some of the hiring difficulties that we face in terms of you know, getting the staff that we need for the future and the amount of work that we have facing us. So this will enable me to spend a lot more of my energy in those areas um, and, uh, and allow uh, ARM to really oversee um, you know, how we perform our work and, uh, and, and delivering water and power throughout the city on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's uh, a real pleasure to have him here. I, uh, we've actually been conjuring this idea up for quite a while uh, after when uh, Rachel Kerr announced that she would be leaving 
and we're looking at uh, what we would need uh, to, to help manage the department and, uh, and uh, help me in my role to be as, a, uh, as effective as possible. So I want to uh, welcome Arm2 uh, back to the Department of Water and Power and invite him to say a few words if you'd like. Thank you. Thank you, Marty. Uh, Madam Chair, the commissioners, thank you for uh, having me here. As Marty said, this LA is my home as an immigrant young teenager. Uh, when I landed in the United States in 1977, LA was my home. Uh, we've built a family. Our kids were born in, in Los Angeles, so I consider Los Angeles my home. And the department is my, my, my first employer and, and uh, that, that I spent decades serving the department. It is an honor and a privilege to be here. Uh, this is not just a job for me. So uh, I thank you for giving me the opportunity and I'm here to serve you and serve the city of Los Angeles as best as I can. Uh, sir, uh, Marty, just let me interject quickly. I do want to welcome Arm back to the department and also to note that he is the second DWP retiree to return to service at, at the department. In my experience here, our first was Susanna Reyes, who retired oh, yes. from the department <laughs> and returned as a member of this board of commissioners. Uh, Susanna set a very high bar in terms of her impact and the uh, leveraging of her insight as it relates to this board. I uh, look forward to um, and have uh, your reputation, sir, precedes you. So I look forward to the impact that you will have uh, in your return stint at the department as well and do want to welcome you here. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you, sir. And you're correct, I stand corrected. <laughs> no oversight to to Susanna. Um, just a couple brief things. Uh, I, some of the board was there. Um, uh, it was a, we had a great event. Uh, President McLean Hill uh, spearheaded and conceived the idea of a women's uh, leadership summit mm -hmm. that occurred in no early November. And uh, we had uh, more than 100 employees attend that. Uh, they uh, were essentially uh, mid to high level uh, women managers at the department uh, from all over, uh, not only in LA, but also from out of town. We have folks come down from the Owens Valley. Um, it was extremely well received. And um, uh, I know that uh, uh, besides yourself, uh, Madam President, also uh, Vice President uh, Cynthia Ruiz spoke, uh, was one of the inspirational speakers uh, who have heard tremendous comments uh, and compliments about what you had to say. Um, Ann Santilli um, was featured as well in, in her role, as well as career coach uh, Nance Rosen. Uh, our own Evelyn uh, Cortez Davis, uh, who heads up wets in the water, uh, was our moderator for the day. And uh, it was uh, it was a, a real, real great event. And uh, I, I can tell you from the comments that I received afterwards, the impact that it had. And so I'm sure you received your own comments, but uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was a, a, a great gathering of the minds and I think set the stage for some many good things in the future. And we know that um, we, we've been sitting around 25 to 28% of women in the workforce uh, for many years, as we heard in some of the, the women's uh, summits for decades, and trying to grow that number and make more job opportunities available, as well as recognize uh, women in leadership roles and uh, and make sure that uh, that every avenue is open to them uh, in their careers. Uh, I think this is a great step forward. So thank you for that on behalf of all the employees. And I can tell you that uh, it, it made a real impact on, on a lot of folks. And of course, one of the highlights of the day, Marty even danced. <laughs> That's a long story. That's a long story. <laughs> it was short. <laughs> Um, real quick, I'd like to turn over to Do Anselmo. Do tape? <laughs> yeah. um, uh, Anselmo next month will give us a report on the precipitation situation in the state, but today he does <coughs> want to tell us about a couple of awards that we received for one of the projects, one that the Commissioner Neiman Brady was at the dedication for. So. Thank you, Marty. Good morning, Commissioners. I, I want to take the opportunity to just uh, highlight some awards that we received. Um, I'm very proud to share that the LA Reservoir Ultraviolet Disinfection Facility, or the LARUV, uh, won three awards recently, and I wanted to share that with the board. Uh, the first award was from the Engineering News Record of California. It's the 2022 Best Regional Project Award of Merit in Water Environment Category. We also got the American Society of Civil Engineers, the Metropolitan LA Branch, 
that also provide us an award, uh, the 2022 Outstanding Environmental Engineering uh, Project, and then one from the ASC Los Angeles section, 2022 Environmental Engineering Project of the Year. And, and the reason why I wanted to mention this is because this was a very significant project. This was the culmination of over 20 years of water quality improvement projects that the water system has been delivering. And um, it was over a billion dollars that the Department of Water and Power in the State of LA invested in the system to be able to do this. The LARUV is the second largest in the entire country. The, the largest one is actually in uh, New York. And we have the second and third largest between the LARUV and the Pankish Perec UV plant that was built back in 2014. Um, it took a lot of work from a lot of different groups. And I wanted to just take an opportunity and mention those groups because I think that they've done excellent work in the water system, the Water Engineering and Technical Services Division, where they did a lot of planning, some of the design, project and construction management, as well as, as, well as survey. Our water distribution division that designed and installed some of the largest trunk lines that we have in our system. The largest one being 144 inches in diameter. So some pretty big pipe that our, our folks designed and installed. Our water operations division who is responsible for the operations and maintenance of the facility. Our water quality division that worked really closely with the division of drinking water in making sure that we got the permits and that we comply with all the regulations that were set forth by the state and the federal government. Also the water executive loans and grants group that successfully was able to get $103 million in low interest loans, very significant. That equated to savings around $16 million for repairs. And also the power system who uh, installed the power supply to this facility, which is critical, and the joint system that uh, participated in developing the environmental documentation for it. So certainly it was a group effort. It's an award that came to the water system, but I share it with the joint and the power systems because we all work together in achieving this. So I want to say thank you publicly to everybody. And that's it. Thank you, Marty. Thank you, so and congratulations. Um, lastly, I wanted to, uh, to highlight a new video we have trying to promote the LIHEAP program. So LIHEAP is the Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program, and it's a federally funded program that allows income qualified uh, customers to receive up to $3,000 tax-free of money to help pay for their utility bills. And so this is one of the avenues that we've been trying to promote in addition to the assistance that the department has offered and money from the state of California to try to help the customers that, uh, particularly low income customers that are that are very hard hit and, and most affected, particularly during the pandemic and during the economic you know the downturn that we're seeing right now. And so one of the challenges has always been to get the word about this program out and how to advertise it. And so we partnered with Pacoima Beautiful um, and uh, located a uh, community member in North Hollywood and did a promotional video involving this person. And so um, I want to just briefly show you the video and we're working through our community partners to push this out, to, to have a testimonial to help people understand that, that they too could apply and uh, receive assistance. Again, it's federal money that income qualified customers can receive. It's tax free, it does not af affect other benefits that they may receive through us or the state. And it's something that, that we think more customers could take advantage of and, and, and help them during this time particularly. So if I could roll the video, I'd just like to show you the, the clip that we've put together. And this is through the work that the Journal of Marlowe group has done as well as Nancy and David Jaco. So Steve, I'm supposed to say Steve roll the video. So there we go. <laughs> Hola, mi nombre es René. Mi familia consta de cuatro miembros. Hemos vivido en North Hollywood por cinco años. La crisis del COVID nos impactó a todos porque nos disminuyó las horas de trabajo, entonces los ingresos fueron menos. Fue fácil obtener el apoyo de LIHIP, pues con la ayuda del proveedor local, ellos me explicaron los recursos existentes, también el proceso, Eh, completar la solicitud en línea fue muy fácil. El apoyo financiero de LIHIP ha sido muy importante, pues con esto nos permite pagar los recibos de facturas eléctricas y con este apoyo nosotros obtenemos más recursos en nuestro hogar. Este apoyo de LIHIP no afecta a otros programas o otras ayudas que tú estés recibiendo, como por ejemplo CalFresh. No te preocupes, aplica. So 
So that's a sample of our latest efforts to try to reach more customers and with all the programs that are available to them. So unless there's any questions, that's the end of my report. Good job. Um, are there any uh, questions or comments regarding the general manager's report? Uh, then uh, I would simply like to uh, add my congratulations to the water system, um, a significant achievement, and to all of the employees who participated in making that happen over the years. Uh, a, a real heartfelt thank you. Thank you. Uh, we will move to introduction of motions. Are there motions to be introduced uh, for consideration at this time? Uh, seeing none, uh, comments from ratepayer advocates. Are there any comments that you'd like to make at this time, or uh, or would you like to reserve comments for some later point in the meeting? Um, I think at this time I'd like to express our office's support for item M5, the Windy Point Amendment, which I understand will involve further discussion, and we would be happy to take any question and be part of that discussion as needed. Uh, you said M5? Yeah, Windy Point, M5. Okay, terrific, thank you. Um, terrific. Uh, then do we have any, dis any uh, community impact reports? There are no community impact statements or formal positions filed by any neighborhood councils on any of the items on today's agenda. Thank you for that. Um, comments from Inspector General? Sir. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, good morning, uh, management of LADWP. <laughs> I wanted to extend my earnest welcome to Mr. Benjamin. Uh, we met uh, shortly after his return to, to the department. Um, and we both spoke about how he is returning to, uh, to his home, but it's a different place now, given some of the events that have taken place. Obviously. And he was really clear uh, with me about his commitment to ensuring that trust and integrity and oversight is something that is woven into the fabric of this agency. Um, and I look forward to working with him and to seeing that commitment bear fruit. So thank you so much. Thank you. Sir, thank you. Um, then we will move to, let's see, um, items recommended for approval. Uh, in items M. So uh, at this point, I'd like to uh, indicate that we are calling M5, M6, and 7 special. Uh, so I'm looking for a motion related to items M1 through M4. So moved. Seconded. Uh, would you call the roll? Commissioner Lehrer. Aye. President McLean Hill. Aye. Commissioner Neiman Brady. Aye. Vice President Ruiz. Aye. Four ayes, motion adopted. Uh, terrific. Uh, we have no management reports for this meeting uh, or filed items. Uh, minutes, all commissioners were present. Is there a motion to approve? Move approval on our minutes for November 8th. I will second. Commissioner Larere. Aye. President McLean Hill. Aye. Commissioner Neiman Brady. Aye. Vice President Ruiz. Aye. Four ayes, motion adopted. Uh, terrific. Then uh, with that, we can move to item M5. Turn over to Jason, sitting in for Brian Wilbur to take the lead on this. Uh, thank you, uh, Marty. So we're going to have a very short staff presentation uh, led by a manager of our fuel and purchase power uh, a group, uh, Marlon Santa Cruz. Marlon, please take it away. Good morning, commissioners. Sir. Uh, thank you for entertaining us. And uh, just for logistics, do I need to request for the slice advance or do I have control here? I think you have control. Excellent, all right. So uh, we bring before you today a uh, request for an amendment to an existing contract that DWP holds with SCAPA for renewable energy that is produced at the facility known as Windy Point, Windy Flats in the Washington area. We'll go through some background details as to what the project itself is. It is a 
fairly large renewable wind project that is up in the Pacific Northwest, and it is one of the key components of LADWP's portfolio for meeting our renewable energy goals, specifically the benchmark of 60% by 2030. As for the facility itself, it has a capacity of 262 megawatts, although it is subject to the weather. So apart from how much it can produce, we look at its tenure average capacity factor and it behaves at 31% average, which is actually pretty good for one facility. So this facility translates into 700,000 megawatt hours per year. And in terms of the contract itself, it came into fruition in March of 2010 and the contract will come to expiration in September of 2030. What that means for us specifically is part of our portfolio that this one project is 9.13% of our RPS acquisitions uh, in 2021. That means it's one of the largest players in our portfolio. It's actually a very good thing for the people of Los Angeles. It's one of the major contributors for us to meet our renewable goals. And so I'm building up to the punchline that we'd like to keep a good thing going. <laughs> so to establish, it's a good thing. Now, what the ask is, the amendment itself. So the contract already has a provision for an extension of up to four years. But we're seeing on the screen here that we're asking for up to six. So there's some context here that I'll try to be brief on. Uh, namely, the counterparty is looking to extend and they were hoping to get two more years out of us. And we saw an opportunity and thought, well, let's negotiate. And so we came to the table and we established six. And it's six at a good price, which we'll get to in the next slide. So right now, all we're asking for is the normal four year extension that is within the contract itself. So why an amendment? Because the contract didn't say explicitly what the terms would be for that extension say the price, the, the guarantee of deliverability and uh, certain terms that simply were not filled in. So this amendment will fill in those gaps and allow us to take advantage of that four year extension. So this is simply an update to the contract language. And the benefits would be that this energy is firmed in shape. So it is grandfathered as bucket zero energy, which is the highest quality of energy that we can be receiving and getting credit for with the CEC. And that's why, again, we would like to keep a good thing going. In addition to all that jazz, if it wasn't enough, this actually allows us to continue to support the transmission system, the Pacific DC intertie. Uh, it's up in the Pacific Northwest and it allows us to continue to stabilize frequency and voltage for our LA grid. So the cost impacts, basically the difference of if we do this versus if we don't do this. Well, if we do do this, it's actually already been budgeted in the power revenue funds, uh, renewable energy budget, just letting you know, we've taken care of the paperwork. And what is the cost? So here's the punchline. For the extension, the estimated energy price that they are offering would be $56.46 per megawatt hour. If the contract were to expire and we were to try to procure like energy at that time, the IRP group has run a model and as best as we could dial it in, we anticipate that we would be paying $82.29 per megawatt hour. So inherently by continuing this contract and extending it, we would be acquiring a savings for the LA ratepayer in addition to maintaining bucket zero energy. Additionally, the total energy, just what it would look like if we were to continue for this four year extension, we would be receiving approximately 2.8 million megawatt hours. No, the counterparty will not be charging us up front in the current contract for any of this future energy. There are no incremental costs that will be occurring in the current contract. We made sure of that. Now, what this means for annually to get the big picture, uh, the estimated cost of the energy would be $39.5 million. In retrospect, 2021, what we paid for the current contract, this bucket zero energy was $52.3 million. So already to receive the same amount of energy, we would be paying almost $13 million less per year. And the contractual pur purchase options, excuse me, will be available six months prior to the end of the delivery term. That is just to say that the contract does have a purchase option built into it. 
this amendment will not remove that. It will move it to the end of the new contract, the four-year extension, but it'll still be there. So in the event that we want to consider purchasing the project, we will still have that option. Uh, of course, there's a lot more context, and uh, I welcome you to ask any questions you may have regarding this project. So, Marlon, so I support this, but uh, what we had a, a four-year amendment, right? So yes. why didn't we just double that and go for eight years total versus six? That's an excellent question, very astute. So why six? There's actually open bonds for the project right now, and six years was the limit that we could go to for the 80% of the expected life of the project. So we, we cut it right there so as to not have to reissue any bonds or, or bother those. Got it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, any other questions or comments? I have some comments, but I'll wait for any other questions. The floor yeah. is yours, Commissioner. Right, Marlon, uh, thank you for your enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you have a radio voice. Yeah. <laughs> Welcomed in the morning. <laughs> I am very pleased to see how prepared and thorough this was. Um, I have to thank my staff for that, sitting right here, by the way. Yeah. I recognize them. Um, the... And the, the back and forth, I appreciate as well. I know I um, asked a lot of questions. The materials you sent me were very helpful, and, and particularly the last email um, as it relates to understanding what other opportunities are in the market. The magnitude of this contract for our portfolio should not be lost on anybody and its importance, um, hence the, the really deep diving on it. Uh, going forward, I hope to see you continue to keep this rigor. And um, my other request is that the thought of how the whole portfolio, how any project fits into the whole portfolio, I think is an important thing to keep into context. And so not just mentioning the, the PCC zero bucket, uh, but also helping the entire board understand how any project over the time fills our goals. I think we should incorporate that into any contract going forward. Will do. And um, I appreciate the work. Thank, Thank you, you, Commissioner. And can you introduce your staff, please? Oh, I'm sorry. I jumped right in. Uh, my name is Marlon Santa Cruz. No, I'm, I'm wondering who you are. <laughs> you said you have staff with you. Oh, yes. So uh, I manage the External Resources Management Group, the supervisor of which is Ms. Regina Peng, and the assistant supervisor of which is Mr. Aaron Perlman. And both are uh, key. In fact, the savvy negotiation is definitely due to their exploits. Uh, thank you so very much. Camden, did you have any comments? No, I would just echo um, Commissioner Neiman Brady's comment about a holistic view where individual transactions fit into a uh, context where the board really understands the role contextually. Um, and the strategy behind a lot of these decisions that would be helpful. Uh, very much appreciate it. Uh, thank you for your presentation. It was really um, very well done and obviously very well received. Uh, with that, is there a motion to approve uh, M5? So moved. Second. Uh, would you call the roll, please? Commissioner Lehrer? Aye. President McLean Hill? Aye. Commissioner Neiman Brady? Aye. Vice President Ruiz? Aye. Four ayes motion adopted. Thank uh, you, Commissioner. We'll now move to M6, and thank you very much. Uh, which was yeah. called special by uh, our Vice President. Uh, Commissioner, did you want a presentation on this item? So I, first of all, let me just say I'm in support of this item. And the reason I called it special because I think this is a great example of how the LADWP and Department of Public Works in particular, Bureau of Sanitation, LA San is working together. So I would just like a very brief uh, summary and very high level and the opportunity to introduce the team on both sides because again, it's a, just a great example. Uh, and one of my assignments is uh, participating in a task force between the two departments, LADWP and Public Works. And I just really 
feel that we've made a lot of strides and I really appreciate when the staff work, works together on both sides, it's very important. So who would like to come up and just give us a brief high level Sure, Overview. Commissioner. So I'm going to have I'm going to ask Delon Kwan, who's Assistant Director of Water Resources Division, as well as Jesus Gonzalez, who is the manager of our Recycle Water Policy Group. And I also want to point out that in the audience is Fernando, Fernando Gonzalez, who is the manager of the Donald C. Tillman plant. Fernando, you can wave. There he is. Hi, so Fernando. he's instrumental in, in this project as well. Delon and Jesus will provide a summary as you requested. Just Commissioner, uh, oh. before that, um, I believe Commissioner Lair needs to um, leave the room Sorry. and recuse herself. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. And, um, no, it's okay. Do you want me to just yeah, you recuse myself? actually have to mm -hmm. yes. leave that. Okay. And Commissioner Lair's um, interest is a remote interest under California Government Code 1091B17. Um, and that uh, will allow the remainder of this board to consider the item. Thank you, and thank you, Councillor. I spaced that. <laughs> thank you. Sir. Yeah, good morning, Commissioners. Uh, I'm going to have uh, Jesus Gonzalez, uh, manager of the water recycling policy, to kind of go over the high level overview, and then we'll be uh, available for any questions um, at the end. Good morning, Commissioners. <clears throat> Again, Jesus Gonzalez, manager of recycled water policy, and thank you for asking that we speak on this item. Commissioner Ruiz, you're absolutely right. This is a major milestone for the city. Uh, a tremendous success in terms of demonstrating collaboration between DWP and LA Sanitation in working also with other agencies, uh, specifically Bureau of Engineering. So it has been a collective effort amongst all parties with uh, this project specifically. This project is one of the largest uh, potable reuse projects in the country. The intent is for us to recycle all the wastewater from Donald C. Tillman and to create a new drinking water supply for the city of LA. Similar to Operation Next, the intent, of course, is to build advanced treatment at DCT, uh, similar to Operation Next, and to use that water to spread at the Hanson Spreading Grounds. And once recharging in the, in the San Fernando Basin, we could extract and have a new drinking water supply for the city of LA. What we, we, we like to emphasize is the size and scale of the project. The water will produce 17,000 acre feet of recycled water per year, uh, which equates to enough drinking water for up to 200,000 residents for the city. So significant project, it is being reviewed by expert panel, it is being monitored by the state. Uh, again, tremendous support from all the city departments in terms of our, our ability to get to this point. This MOA specifically allows us to provide funding to LA San, who would then retain contractors to design and build all the facilities at Donald C. Tillman, which would be everything that you see on the screen. Um, the blue and green the blue and green boxes represent all the infrastructure that's needed to perform the project. The lion's share of the funding. Uh, which totals $53.5 million to engineer and design, is, is primarily associated with the advanced treatment facilities. But as a part of the advanced treatment, there's also support facilities. We're talking electrical upgrades, pump stations, enhancements to the site itself for us to be able to reuse all the water. So what you see on the screen is a breakdown of the $53.5 million, which again is focused on all the engineering and design associated with the facilities. Again, the lion's share being the, the purification facility, the support facilities. There's gonna be some enhancements to the Japanese gardens. And with the project of this size and scale, we did allocate 20% for contingency for the project. Um, what, what's, what's not to be lost on everybody is not just the fact that we're gonna be going through a very arduous effort with the design and engineering associated with the project, but we have received also state support for the project. We received earlier this year a loan from the US EPA for $224 million, which will be used for the project. What our intent is over the next 18 months is to engineer everything associated with the project come back to this board in 18 months to report back on the cost and the feasibility of the project. So this is step one for us to be able to start the engineering in, in partnership with sanitation. And then in 18 months, we'll return back to provide a report as to what the project would, would cost to build and complete. So again, we're very excited again with the amount of support we've received from this commission, your leadership, Commissioner Ruiz, and again, and our partners at LA Sanitation. And if anybody has not visited the Japanese garden, 
at Donald C. Tillman, it is amazing. So what exactly are, are the plans there? You mentioned that we're gonna do something there as well. Correct, so the Japanese garden is currently fed water by the plant, recycled water. Um, we wanna be able to recirculate some of that flow and capture it, treat it, and have it also contribute towards the drinking water supply. So we wanna make sure that the pipeline that's needed, that's gonna cross the Japanese garden gets installed to divert some of that flow. And then we wanna make sure that we bring that, any, any impacts that we cause to the garden itself gets, uh, gets redone and completed as it exists today. And it's important to note, just given the item number seven that's next, that, that this body of water is managed by the Bureau of Sanitation, not by LADZ. And so, um, Jesus, is there anybody else that you'd like to introduce? I know we introduced Fernando. Thank you. So um, it's a long list, I'll keep it short, but Fernando Gonzalez, plant manager for DCT is here. Ryan Thea, his counterpart also at DCT. Uh, Mr. Ryan Jackson from the mayor's office. He's not here yet. He's supposed to be here. But again, we've received support from the mayor's office um, and our friends at BOE. Again, there's a laundry list of folks that have been involved just to get us to this point. So, um, And then one more. Uh, so the supervisor for the group is Mr. Andrew Hahn also. So he's, he's in the audience. Yes, um, I have an army behind me that's done a lot of good work to get us to this point. So Andrew Hahn, Sebastian's here. There's a number of folks that are listening in today. This is, this is I can't underscore how big of a deal this is for, for the entire city. So thank you again. Well, thank you so much. And with that, again, I uh, commend everybody for the collaboration. And with that, I'd like to move approval of this item. Um, I will second. I'd also like to simply acknowledge the uh, critical importance, um, both of the department's efforts here, but of the broader collaboration across the city family. Um, it is um, not lost on me that um, the uh, that remarkable work is done by civil servants every day, the kind of work that goes unnoticed, unrecognized, unseen, but has tremendous impact on the quality of life for people living in Los Angeles. Uh, I was in a conversation earlier this morning talking about the significance of water in LA and what it's meant for uh, the city uh, the city's growth and um, and prosperity and all of the efforts that are currently underway to support us into our next 150, 200 years. And to know that that work is being done today in real time by you and your colleagues is really something quite, um, you know, quite empowering. So I, I want to extend uh, my uh, appreciation uh, and thank Commissioner Ruiz for calling this item to really uh, give us all a moment to take stock of what's occurring. It's important that uh, that the public know uh, that you know behind <laughs> in, in these buildings uh, that you know look somewhat imposing sometimes, uh, and uh, uh, you know, and the government that they support with their dollars that there is really remarkable service underway. So thank you for that. Um, with that, would you please call the roll, Commissioner Lehrer? Excuse me, President McLean Hill. Uh, aye. Commissioner Neiman Brady. Aye. Vice President Ruiz. Aye, aye, aye. <laughs> <laughs> the ayes motion adopted. Thank you very thank much. You um, <laughs> thank you all. And uh, we have uh, M7. Uh, would, you, would somebody please, uh, I assume Commissioner Lair can return to this item. Uh, would someone let her know that she uh, can come back? While we uh, wait for Commissioner Lair, I would invite uh, folks to go to the internet and look up Donald C. Tillman. Uh, we have all of these, you know, it's, it's sort of interesting that we have, um, you know, these landmarks or public projects named after particular individuals and often over time you lose context you know who is this person and why and as uh, this project was being presented I just googled him and I am floored so I would very much encourage you to uh, to look up Mr. Tillman he is really quite something 
And then the Japanese garden is so beautiful. And it always amazes me that there's people that like get married there right next to a wastewater <laughs> treatment plant, but it's so beautiful. All right, uh, M7. Uh, yeah. Commissioner uh, Neiman Brady, would you yes, like so to this, speak to that? Yes, so this motion uh, that's being introduced uh, by uh, both uh, Mia and I, uh, really stems from, although we did not get an update from Anselmo today on the on the drought conditions, the, the city's water availability has never been so precarious, and water restrictions now exist that have never existed before. So this, this motion was really triggered by the fact that LADWP manages several reservoirs and water bodies that for really for regulatory reasons no longer serve uh, drinking water purposes. And particularly timely is that the Department of Public Works um, Bureau of Engineering is proposing to construct um, the Silver Lake Reservoir Complex, which we at e LADWP are extremely supportive of, mm -hmm. but recognizing that essentially the department needs at this moment to develop a policy that recognizes the, the, the during drought conditions and other emergencies identified by whether it's the local or the state or, or federal agencies that water levels in these reservoirs are secondary to serving our drinking water needs in our community. And this policy should address how those facilities would need um, to be reduced under those extenuating, extenuating circumstances and conditions. So that's really what uh, we're striving for. We look forward to the, um, the motion is directing um, the, the water team and, and the department to develop that policy and we look forward to, to seeing that at this time. I can go ahead and read the, the motion if that is uh, the best course of action or if um, folks have had sufficient time to read it, I, I can go ahead and, and make a motion. Cynthia, what would you prefer? Um, I've, I've certainly read it. I am uh, very much supportive of it. Uh, I uh, am curious as to whether there are any comments by staff. No, there's not, Commissioner. Um, I would simply uh, ask if we have a due date back. When would you like this? Uh, the motion does not indicate uh, by when uh, you would like to have the policy. Uh, it's, that, that is correct uh, because I think I, um, I was leaving it to the team to tell me when they feasibly thought they could construe it. Um, uh, and Selma is by the uh, end of the year feasible? We can certainly have a, a draft policy turn on pretty quickly. Um, the policy also needs to be vetted with the mayor's office because it could impact the water conservation ordinance that we currently are okay. under. Right. And also we need to evaluate whether or not this triggers any kind of sequel action. Right. But certainly we can have a draft for the board to review pending evaluation by the environmental team to see if there is sequel action required or not. Uh, did you say by the end of the year? Yeah, do we not have one more meeting? We do. Um, I just wanted to make sure that that's what, uh, that Mr. Collins heard that <laughs> and said I yes. Did. <laughs> okay. I was hoping for a little more time, but we can do it. Okay, terrific. <laughs> um, then um, with that, uh, I don't think that we require an amendment of the motion. Um, I think that we can pass it as drafted with the expectation that we will see a draft policy uh, by the end of the year. Uh, okay. Um, would you like uh, to, is there uh, a motion to be made? I move that we uh, pass or that we adopt uh, item M7. Is there a second? Aye. Uh, it's been moved and seconded. Would you please call the roll? Commissioner Lehrer? Aye. President McLean Hill? Aye. Commissioner Neiman Brady? Aye. Vice President Ruiz? Aye. Four ayes motion adopted. Uh, terrific. Uh, that brings us to the close of our open session meeting. The remainder of our meeting will be in closed session. Uh, Councilor, Ms. Riley? The board shall... The board shall convene into closed session. The board shall publicly report any action taken in closed session and the vote or abstention of every member present thereon in accordance with section 54957.1 of the California Government Code. 
Uh, terrific. We will uh, convene in closed session. Uh, can we move into closed session in uh, at 11.10? Does that work for everyone? Terrific. So 11.10. And we'll, we're going to use this room. So thank you.